Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast in need to be listening to on today's episode we're talking about a potential new signee to wwe a new return to wwe that went down last night uh and of course we're going to answer a bunch of your questions before we get started i want to i want to say this too we put them up here uh last week happy birthday happy and birth- happy, happy birthday. i think they call it happy heavenly birthday happy heavenly birthday uh, enforcer. to the enforcer yeah we miss them so much we love you we love you enforcer we miss you and uh, it's February twenty eighth, though it's his birthday. Yep. So uh, we might we might have to do something to celebrate that. Yeah, we'll do something tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Thursday. Tomorrow. I think I think I'm not doing anything tomorrow night. I don't I think, think I'm doing do anything something. tomorrow night either. All right, cool. Uh, let's talk about this first, though. So uh, there's some footage out there, some fan shot footage. Yeah. Of a WWE house show, a small segment where Maxine Dupree coming off a match. Uh, is heading back uh, through the entranceway yeah. uh, up the ramp on the stage. And uh, some wrestling fans are being uh, rather rude to her. And there's been a lot of discourse on Twitter. And mainly it's, it's, it's you know, people pointing out that this is, uh, what's the word? Aberrant. Is that how you say that word? Yeah. Aberrant behavior. This is awful behavior. This is behavior not fitting so- of like humanity of real people well so so the situation you yeah you described it it's it's the after match the camera's just on maxine as she's going up the ramp i mean i, I assume this is a, i haven't seen any information like concrete information about when this house show took place i would assume recently but who knows if, if nothing else the video sort of went viral recently yeah it yeah, went viral recently night. yeah um we don't know who her opponent was as far as i know at least I haven't seen word about who her opponent was. So. I think I, from what I understand, like one of the people that were talking about this particular video, uh, I forget exa- who they said it was, but they were like, you know, the match wasn't even that bad. Like, yeah, I saw like, that too. Yeah. I saw that too. So anyways, yes, there is, there is, uh, you, as Maxine makes her way up the ramp, you hear quite a few boos. You hear uh, one, one person, a man. Uh, say something. Is he really though? No. Is he really a man, Larson? No, no. Um, saying something uh, pretty disrespectful. Um, and, and you know, and there's been a lot of discourse on social media about you know you have the segment of the fan base who's like, well, the fans paid their ticket; they can react however they want to. Oh, those they are, can, those are crap fans, right? Yeah, there. you can boo and you can cheer and you paid your hard-earned money; you could do what you want. And of course, there's more reasonable people. Yeah, who are like, well, yes. To a degree, you can boo and cheer, but that's you know based on the characters in the ring. You're supposed to cheer the good guys and boo the bad guys. But you know when you have a wrestler out there who is trying to hone their craft, yeah, and you know probably the best place for Maxine to do that is at live events in front of a live crowd. Yeah, and it, it's she has not been wrestling very long. Right. Yeah. You know you have to enter. That show, that match with the understanding that sh- this is a learning experience for her. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know? And to then, as she's making her way up the ramp, boo! And and just be crappy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's it's bogus. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a bummer because, I, man, a lot of the pro wrestling, the live pro wrestling experiences that we've had, that I've had. Yeah have been to a degree and it's not it's not universal it's not every single one like when we went to dynamite i feel like that was a fa- in terms of like the crowd experience it was a fairly positive one yeah i remember we went to the raw it was the mcmahon shakeup raw yeah and remember like just over like two sections and like two sections is not that close i mean it's kind of close but it's not that close there was a guy probably 50 yards away who just the entire time is back when jojo was a ring announcer and just incessantly jojo just screaming for her. And I'm like, the I look, I understand that like pro wrestling, the fandom for whatever reason, it attracts a certain element in addition to like normal people, like plenty of normal people yeah, 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 yeah. like pro wrestling. You know, you go and you see like 
fans and and it's great. Even the last when you me and Double went to SmackDown. Yeah. There was a guy screaming some stuff that I can kind of be taken as as vaguely racist when oh man, I forgot who it was was in the ring. I don't know. I for, I forget if it was if it was Bobby Lashley. I know it was a black wrestler. Oh. And or it might have been the prophets at the time. I forget. But he was like screaming some stuff, and I was like, "The fuck!" And it wasn't like overt, but it was definitely like, "Okay, dude, what are you trying to say here?" And I don't forget, and I forget what it is. Even if I remembered, I probably wouldn't want to say it. But I was like, "Man, like, there's families here, there's yeah. kids here, there's yeah. like normal people here. We don't need yeah. to hear that no. stuff." But I swear, like every not everyone, but at so many pro wrestling events we've been to. There's there's like one person in the area who's got to act like a jackass. You know that that's that's not something exclusive to pro wrestling. You can go to any sporting event, and you know sometimes there'll seemingly be whole sections of fans who take things too far. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, there's and, plenty of viral videos of that stuff. Exactly. You know, and and I guess one thing about pro wrestling, and maybe this is why people feel like they can go too far to a degree, is. You know, you go to a sporting event, and 99% of the time, you yell something at the court of the field. Players aren't going to hear it. Yeah, right. And if they do, they ain't going to respond to it because they're focused on what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, you can see little clips of videos where people on the field are responding to people in the stands. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a baseball game and try to get a player's attention. They're focused on their jobs. Mm -hmm, You know, they're not paying attention for the most part to what's going on in the crowd. Yeah. Pro wrestling... You know, in a lot of respects, especially if you're closer to the ring, there's a back and forth. There can be a back and forth between sure. performer and audience. Yeah. And if you go to an independent show, that's one of the most enjoyable things about going to those shows is your proximity to the ring, your ability to to chat up the wrestlers. And, and the performance just feels like this organic thing that's constantly developing that and it exists between performer and audience. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's not the case in other sporting events. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And and. People, I think, sometimes think, okay, well, there's that give and take between performer and audience. I'm going to push it. Mm-hmm, yeah. Or because the, the, it, it is generally accepted that you interact with the performers, they think, well, this is my opportunity to, quote, unquote, be critical. Yeah. And then, you know, cross the line and be disrespectful to yeah. performers. Yeah. That happens, unfortunately, in pro wrestling. But I, 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 in my mind, it seems like that's the difference between any other sporting event and pro wrestling is you're interacting that. with characters. Yeah, you're interacting with characters as opposed to, and and it's a unique form of entertainment. Yes. largely because of that. You know, you don't when you go to you know like a a, a a play of some sort. It's rare that you're like, hey, you know, and the and the, and the actors, the players. If, if, if you're you yelling at Leave Schreiber up there on the Broadway stage. Guess what? You're going to be escorted out of the theater. <laughs> All right. Boo, you, you know, hey, Yay. Hamlet. We, hey, Hamlet, you piece of crap. Let me hear your Eddie Kingston impression. Leave. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, on, honestly, I feel like, and, and you know, oftentimes here at Going In Raw, we talk about what the, the discourse is, yeah. is talking about, and that's why we're bringing this up. I'd like to think that we're preaching to the choir here at Going In Raw because I feel like a lot of our audience – are more on the normal side. I'd like to think so. I'd like so. to hope so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know there's like Mr. Dope's out there, but <laughs> I'm joking. I love him. Um, Dope's great. Dope's great. No, he's awesome. And, you know, we were there with him at SmackDown, and he behaved like a perfectly normal wrestling fan. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But, no, there's people out there, man. And I'm just saying, look, if you see somebody near you, you know, doing something like that, I'm not going to judge you. If you punch him in the face. Now, the court of law might judge you. Yeah, you'll probably get ejected from the event. In a harsh manner if you do that. But Steve here won't judge you if you take, you know, some vigilante justice into your own hands. Do you agree with me, Larson? Are you going to judge these people for slapping somebody in the face if they're acting a fool? You know, hey, I'm, I'm not in their shoes, so I don't know what the... I, I'm not going to say one thing or the other. All but. right, Larson's with me on this one. He's advocating advocating for you guys to use violence to silence what a mess rowdy fans but then, <laughs> i'm joking i'm, jo- I'm then, obviously then you get those joke. those videos of the fights that break out like a soccer games or football games where people are tumbling down the the the, the aisles and stuff like that that is terrifying like when you have know. like you know the big sort of bleacher style situation yeah. and people like fall down or like you know there's people who are doing like sparta kicks yeah so, i've know, seen that uh, 
<laughs> I've seen someone get Sparta kicked down and roll down like several rolls of, of bleachers. And you're wondering, is this person going to live to see the bottom of these bleachers? See, that's, 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 I mean, that's you're talking about taking some vigilante justice in your own hands. That's the downside. You don't want to do that. And you honestly, like it. people are kind of crazy these days. Even if you give them a hard look, you know, they might be willing to stab you. So I don't know, maybe take it up with security yeah. uh, or just, you know, bear, you know, bear through it. Like, I'm not I'm not a snitch. You know, I haven't done that before. But it's also a reason why I don't bring like I did bring Alabama that time to the Action Coast show. That was yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of fun. Um, That's a much different environment. It is. It, it is a much different environment. But like, I won't bring her to a WWE show because I honestly like with my luck, especially I just feel like. I'm going to end up next to somebody who's saying some inappropriate. When, when Hilton hooked up that awesome front row seat to that house show, there was that. It was it was yeah. like maybe a month after um, Emma had been uh, caught shoplifting. Yeah. And her mug shot was out there. And a couple dudes down the row, front row. Hey, Emma, what are you going to show me? I know they think they're being clever, but right. they, they're not. They're just being assholes. And yeah. that's the lesson here going in Raw. Is yeah. Please Don't be an asshole. What's her mantra here? Just be cool. Just be cool. And if somebody's being an asshole, mm. you know. I'm just saying there's downsides to that. Probably don't want to do that. And you don't don't yeah. listen to Steve. No. Here. There's, there's <laughs> potential downsides to going and just whoopa. <laughs> going in guns blazing. I know. I know. But, you know. It, it, Put so, on your fiend mask first. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Put that thing Put on the first. Uncle Uncle Howdy mask on. I mean, there circling back to the Maxine thing, you know, it's been good to see, uh, uh, you know, other members of WB roster coming out and and checking people for for being disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. you know, I've Rhea tweeted about it. Several others have. Um, you know, it seems like for the most part, the WB locker room is a fairly tight knit group. Mm -hmm, yeah, and you know, it's it's going out there. And being vulnerable as a performer in front of a crowd is hard enough oh as is. Oh, my gosh, I know. And to go out there, especially with Maxine's case, where she doesn't have the experience of a lot of people mm -hmm. already on the roster. Yeah. And, 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 and having to learn on the fly yeah. in front of crowds of thousands. Yeah. Yeah. That is tough. That is tough. Yeah. She so, got called up really soon yeah. after. Yeah. And she got called up, I think, as a manager, you know. Oh, that's I don't, right. I yeah, don't that's know. Right. Yeah. I don't know if she ever had a match in NXT. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. You know, she was on there briefly as what Sophia Cromwell. Yeah, that's that's who she was. That's and right. She yeah. was with Robert Stone for a bit. Yeah. In Vaughn. Um so so it's it's a tough situation for her, and you like the hope that people would be understanding of that situation and and not just be like, oh, this match wasn't to my approval. I know. Boo. Yeah. Boo. I'm going to be Boo. rude to a human yeah. being now. Yeah. I mean, what, what? I don't understand what, what people get out of that. Yeah. We got to find that guy. Go to his job. Boo. Boo. All right. Before we continue on with our episode, Larson, we do this every episode. Yeah. We might have some new viewers here at the old going in raw. Do us a Hold song. Hold on. What? Steven Larson's go, uh, uh, going in raw, a WWE and AW podcast. That's the full name of the That's show. The full name of the show. I'm get sorry. it right. Anyways, make sure you're on that particular channel. And uh, hit that subscribe button and the notify bell. We've been dropping subs lately, and that's scary. We were up to 200,717. Now we're down to like 698 or 685 or something like I don't that. Think it's that low. It's 698. Okay. 698. Man, it was scary business. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're coming to here from the Friendo Club Wrestling Channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. We got new content over at the Friendo Club Wrestling Channel. Today we got some fun wrestling what ifs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so do that. Hit the like button. That's a thumbs up sign. Not the thumbs down. Hit the thumbs up. And then uh, also we've got bonus episodes and access to the question threads and access to our Big Blue Predictions Challenge over at patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. It's the Friendo Club setup. You can also get all that stuff by clicking join right here. YouTube.com slash Stephen Larson. Like I said, bonus episodes, question threads, and access to the Big Blue Predictions Challenge, our blow off for this week's or this month's week of champions. It's coming up at AEW Revolution. Yeah. Will we have a new Big Blue Predictions champion? Who's walking into WrestleMania weekend? Ooh, that's big. Big Blue biggest Predictions champion. I know, that's pretty huge. Very exciting stuff. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's go back to the show. On now. with the show. Sorry, I touched you. Uh, let's talk about people you might see on your television, because I don't think Ari Emanuel is going to be there anytime soon. Former member of Bullet Club. Sorry, Good. what? Bullet, Bullet Club. Club. Guns up, Larson. 
So well, the that's, same, that's different thing. Gold, yeah. Still, it's a bullet club. You got to day too sweet, me brother. So as we were wrapping up the show yesterday, news broke from the Wrestling Observer, a.k.a. Those other guys. That Tama Tonga was expected to sign with Dabba to Dabba to E. And now course, I had to say something snide when that happened, too. I was like, oh, that's what the Wrestling Observer was saying? He's going to AEW. Look, man, no, it's look, number one, it's a funny joke because they've been taking some L's lately, but, but hey, things are on the upswing for Meltzer and crew because Fightful confirmed that that's how you know it's real, uh, that the former IWGP tag and never open weight champ will indeed be heading to WWE. Uh, so how do you see Tamatanga fitting in? To WWE, you think they're going to do a thing at WrestleMania where he'll be part of the bloodline or not? How do you think this is going to play out? I don't know because he's not like officially part of the. No, fa- he's no, not part no. of the family no, tree. No, he's not officially. But um, I think uh, Lance on Hawaii in an interview said that at least Tama Tonga, you know, Haku and, and his family is considered fa- family. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just saw a thing today where The Rock. The Rock says. The Rock said he he uh, when he had his W tryout match, he had to borrow some tights from Haku because um, he didn't have any. And and then you're in and if, then, if it's if it's member to member, you know if it's like, hey, my cloth was right here on my taint, yeah, my yeah. fleshy fun it could zone. Be. It could be here now. You put yours there. We're bonded, brother. Bonded forever. We're bonded. That's it's, what I'm telling you, man. Listen. If you want to make this bond of ours official, can you wear my compression pants? Absolutely not. No. Wear my compression pants, then boom, you could be on my family tree. I'm fine. I, I got a pretty, I got a good family. I'm cool with my family. Um, and so the Rock refers to to Haku as Uncle Tonga, and there you go. Uh, bought there you go. A, bought him a truck for Christmas. Okay. In the last few years, so a full wow, big actual truck. Yeah, huge. I think Ford. Yeah. I need to get like a rich relative, dude. I need a rich relative, man, because right now it is it ain't cutting it the way it's going right now. Like somebody buy me a truck, you know? Are you a truck person though? No, but I could flip it for like I don't know something cooler. I wonder if to pay taxes if you're gifted a truck. You know, you go on a game show, probably, dude, and yeah. you win a truck. Oh, yeah. you got to pay taxes. You got to pay a bunch of tax on that. But yeah. if you're gifted, I don't know. I mean, there's probably an upper limit. Anyway, this, we're way off track. Anyways, as far as what he do, I saw some people talking about how he would he would uh, join up with the Good Brothers in NXT. That'd be so underwhelming. They got history, you know. They, you know, dude. Depending on what they did with it, I don't know. We're about to talk about some more NXT stuff here in a second. I look, man, I was watching that clip from NXT with Lyra Valkyria talking to some chick. I don't even know who this girl is. Yeah. I need to start watching NXT on the regular. The Tatum Paxley stuff where she was like messing with Lyra's arm while she was talking to somebody. That was Is pretty... that Tatum Paxley? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's Tatum yeah. Paxley. They, they had that whole flux of people who came in that kind of just looked like each other. <laughs> like Fallon Enley, Tatum Paxley, similar yeah. names, kind of similar looks. Similar. Yeah. I don't know if one girl is a cowboy girl and everything, but... Um, but the lawyers on there now. Yeah, lawyers on there. Lawyers yeah. on there. Uh, and and, and, you, and you bring Tama Tonga in. I know he's he's not like the it's youngest. A weird dude. fit. It's a. Weird I know. Fit. You'd think you'd think he's got a ton of experience. Founding member of Bullet Club. Yeah. You know. I mean, I don't know if his brand recognition, as far as Tama Tonga brand, is as high as some other people who come from New Japan. But I would think that if you're aware of wrestling outside of WWE, you've probably heard the name Tama Tonga, you know? Yeah, I feel like you would have, yeah. And and so him going to main roster, you would think it would make a lot of sense. You know, man, I'll be like, okay, you're right. I can kind of see, depending on what they're going to do with NXT, because there's a lot of weird pieces there right now yeah. that they're just trying to make work. And, and to a large degree, they are. A lot of people really like NXT right yeah. now. It's not like their ratings have shot up or anything. They sort of stay around 6, 6.57 yeah, sometimes. High sixes, low sevens, yeah. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. If you got Gallows and Anderson down there because AJ split from them, and then you put Tama Tonga with them, maybe like add one more prominent piece, and then they go back up to main roster as a unit after spending a couple months in NXT. I'd be down with that. I that think could that fun. could be kind of interesting. That could be fun. I always, man, I always thought Tama Tonga was pretty cool uh, when him and uh, Tonga Lo would put on that face paint. They would look super yeah. cool. Grills of Destiny. I don't think they'll be cussing up a, a storm during matches. Though. Sadly, no. But they even had to, to, you know, tamper that down a yeah, little bit. Yeah, dial that 
back a bit, which in, is uh, that NXT. Wrestle Kingdom match was pretty funny. Yeah, but that's cool. I'm that's yeah, but yeah, I think you put him with guys that he's had history with and chemistry with. Maybe once AJ is out of his angsty goth phase, he can come back into the fold. This is what you get do. a better name than OC because OC. This is, is what you need to do. Is after Judgment Day breaks up, you get Tama Tonga and Finn back together. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. With, with Gallows and Anderson, guess who you get? You bring in Bad Luck Fowley. Oh, okay. And then you have Finn sit on his shoulders during his entrance because that was always super cool. Yeah, you don't want to do that with Gallows. No. He didn't do that with him in the first place. He no. did it with Tama Tonga. Is there like a dude that you could replace Tama Tonga with? You I mean, not Tama Tonga. Bad Luck Fowley? Fowley? What about, uh, gosh, I'm sure there's somebody in NXT. What about, uh, who's the North American champion guy? Oh, uh, Obafemi? Obafemi. That was one of those names where I knew I knew it, but I was like, it doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. I think I think that's it. Oh, but funny, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. He'd that'd be, be he could be like the the head guy, you know, because yeah. you need like a front guy, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that dude's awesome. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's great. Uh, let's talk about this. Also, in NXT last night, throw him up, Larson. Ten. 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 Sean Spears, not Ty Dillinger, not Ty Dillinger. No giant. You know, Ming the Merciless. Ming the Merciless. Collar, uh, collar on his vest. No, sadly. No. So according to this note right here, Ty Dillinger made his shocking return to NXT last night attacking Rich Holland, but did it using his AEW name of Sean Spears. Yeah. Isn't that his real name? Gavin Spears is his real name. I believe. Oh, I believe. Gavin. I believe, I believe that's his real first name. Fightful Select reports that he will use that name going forward. Not Gavin Spears, not Ty Dillinger, but Shane, Sean Spears. Uh, and that his return was a complete shock. According to one NXT talent, that guy does not pay attention. Whoever that one. <laughs> no, apparently they kept it hush hush back. I know. I just like that, like one guy would be like, yeah, I didn't know it was going to happen. Uh, and that Spears wasn't listed on the oh, show. Oh, wait, rundown. no, his real name's Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie Spears? No, Ronnie Arnell. Arneel. That is nowhere close to Sean Ronnie, Spears. Ronnie Arneel is his real name. Sorry. Man, good job on Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears, for uh, not using his real name. Gavin Spears, I think, was his name when he was in ECW. Oh, okay. When he was in WB ECW. Gotcha. That was his name. Uh, so, and then apparently also, according to his Fightful report, uh, during like the rehearsal for the show, Shawn Michaels stepped in his place. Yeah. And he was like doing the 10. 10. ten. Sweet chin music. 10. <laughs> 10. He's doing his dance in his... Heartbreak kid dancing. So look, look, let me ask you this. Okay. Let's, let's, let's yeah, talk. and he's the guy behind the mysterious vignettes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That I've been playing recently. So, look, I, I was I, I liked Ty Dillinger a lot in NXT. Mm. I thought if they booked him right, he mm. could have been champion. Mm. It's one of your bad hot takes. Not not for not a protracted title reign, but he yeah, was in a few with Bob Roode when he was champion, and he could have beat Bob Roode for that. It could it, the story was there. I'm not saying it would have it would have shook the world, but logically, from a storytelling perspective, it could have happened. All right, so move on. Um, obviously, they didn't do anything with him on the main roster. No, didn't know. Well, he did come out at number ten during the Royal Rumble, and that was great. Yeah. Um, he 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 leaves WB, goes to AEW. He's Sean Spears now. He's the chairman, so he he has the chair. And again, it's a situation where he does some interesting, fun stuff, but never in a high profile situation. Sure. And and it's interesting seeing him return. We've had a debate, and one of the names that that pops up is like, well, if John Moxley goes back to WWE, is he going to be John Moxley? Or is he going to be Dean Ambrose? Right. And obviously, Ty Dillinger slash Sean Spears has not achieved the level of success in either AEW or WB that Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley did. Sure. But seeing that. Rather than coming back to NXT and resuming the Ty Dillinger thing, he's coming back to NXT as Sean Spears. It would seem to me that at least maybe he and WWE recognize the upper ceiling that the Ty Dillinger Perfect Ten. Oh yeah, sure. Character gimmick would have absolutely, and 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 says in this new NXT, we want you just to be you, yeah, or an extension of you. You turned up to eleven. And, uh, and and explore that rather than falling back on some nostalgia from 2018, 2019. Yeah. And we saw, or we saw what the ceiling for that was, at least at the time. Maybe come in a different character. People are going to recognize you. People are going to be excited that you're here. Let's try a different approach than rather than falling back on the same old thing. Well, the thing that I like about it is that it indicates to me that there is seemingly more of a collaborative you know, uh, situation there in NXT because I would imagine Sean Spears probably 
um, has a, has a pretty firm idea as to who he is as that character, yep. Sean Spears. You think so? And coming in, if they're saying, "How would you like to proceed? What would you be most comfortable in? What could you give us the best version of you as?" Mm-hmm. And that would be Sean Spears, the chairman. Yep. Um, I I think that's awesome that there would be that situation between the wrestlers and creative, and it also says to me that. WWE has sort of figured out the um, the algorithm, if you will, yeah. for licensing previously existing names mm-hmm. as opposed to being insistent on owning mm-hmm. those names. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I think it seems like it's a good situation for everybody. NXT is a, a good place to be these days. I'm kind of curious where they're going to be like a year from now or even six yeah. months from now. Yeah. What is it going to look like? Are they still going to be doing these shows where they're at? Is the deal with the CW going to give us a bit of a brand you know, refresh yeah. um, with their presentation? Are they going to go on the road? Did you see the thing the other day where the... I don't know if this is any way confirmed or whatnot of uh, the rumor about TNA yeah. wanting to start doing live TV and one of the prospective sites was Full Sail. Yeah. I'll believe that one when I, in terms like, look, they might have that as a plan. And I think that's interesting. You know, the thing though, is if they're not looking to spend a whole lot more money, guess what's cheaper to do? Bulk tapings. Yeah, I know. I, I, I was really shocked when I saw that. And you know, maybe this, maybe that was an initiative from the Scott Demore era mm-hmm. that they, that, that, you know, might've contributed to them wanting to yeah. part ways. I don't know, but that's the kind of thing where I saw that also. Yeah. And I was like, Man, I don't know. That's hard. <laughs> That's costly. Yeah, and it's and it's not easy to do. No. Um, and I'll be honest with you, man. I don't, did you ever watch the uh, the the wrestlers show on uh, about OVW no, and no, Snow and all that. them? No. It, it's it's so funny because like uh, there was there was this bit where Al Snow was talking about what sets. Oh, you know, I had told you this before. The way they set up the narrative in general is. OVW is the last of the territories that didn't get bought out yeah, by Vince, yeah, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. like completely wrong. Yeah. Like they got it completely wrong, but they're trying to make it, you know, sort of digestible for a, a crowd that doesn't know the history of yeah. OVW. Yeah. And one thing that Al Snow is a big stickler for, and again, maybe this is just part of the narrative they're trying to set up because Al Snow is insistent that they do live television. Yeah. Because if you don't do live, in his words, you're just another indie that runs monthly. And yet, in I'm pretty sure that same episode, they copped to losing like $180,000. Yeah, dollars. you mentioned that, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I know of monthly indie shows that are actually making money, <laughs> not losing $180,000. I know. At, at that point, when you just have, you know, rich guys, like, giving you money just so they could be in the pro wrestling business, you're a hobby. Yeah. You're not really a business. Yeah. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um. Live to it's not the end all be all. No, it's not. I, I really don't no. think it is. I don't know that that's going to like you know, here's do much. Here's here here's maybe one reason they would potentially consider going live and it has less to do with budgetary issues on their side and more because there's a, such a premium in terms of T V rights put placed on live content, specifically live sporting content. Maybe they think, All right, we have this home anthem access, I mean. Um, but obviously that's limited in its, its reach, even though they own it, access. Anthem yeah, does. yeah. So maybe if we go live with our content, we could try to get a TV deal. Heck NWA got a TV deal, yeah. although they're on the CW app. Um, maybe there's potential there. If we do live programming for us to get a, a, a TV deal that would pay us more money. And then from that point, talk about investing more in the company. That's, that could be, you know, getting getting maybe. a lucrative TV deal. That could be that could be the, the what was maybe the end goal there. Yeah, um, I, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, getting back to NXT, I I really would imagine that with the CW, they're going to get some sort of, you know, I would I would love that. I, I hope that they change things up a little bit. Be, I'm not a huge fan of. It'd be cool if they right did now. kind of like uh, uh, regional loops for TV. You know, mm-hmm, yeah. Do a loop up in the Northeast, come back to Florida for a bit. Do a loop in, you know, like the Southwest, mm-hmm, go back yeah. to Florida. Come through yeah. California and the Pacific Northwest, you know? Yeah, no, I know. That would be great. Uh, would you like to answer some questions? Well, let's answer some questions. All right. Uh, let's see. Wow. 
Uh, I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, if you could, uh, DJ Luke says, if you can manage one superstar past or present, who would you pick? One super. Oh, Sid. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, do you think he'd remember your name? Probably not. Doubtful. I'm going to go with, uh, you know, if you want a real wild ride, try to manage Marty Jannetty. Oh, no. <laughs> I value my, what little Sandy I have too much, Steve. <laughs> who's like the more, who's like the most sane per? Like, who's like, who would be like, okay, no, this is cool. Like, this is chill. This is pretty chill right here. Um, that you can manage. I mean, I feel like a lot of the wrestlers that wrestle now are just like, hey, they're, they're uh, yeah, that's they're, what I'm like trying to. They're like, cool. They're professional. I'm trying to challenge myself and go back in time. Like, I feel like, hey, managing Bret Hart. I kind of feel like Bret yeah, was a he chill seemed, dude. He seemed pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> when I say chill, I mean boring. Exactly. Uh, New Kyle says, what is your uh, respective memorable iconic moments of Virgil's career? So we actually had an opportunity yeah. to interact with Virgil. Virgil passed away. Yeah, Virgil course, passed yeah. away. Yes. Um, we were uh, covering Comic Con for, uh, for Machinima. I think it was yeah. 2011. Yeah. yeah, and it was early one of the days. We were going around trying to get some interviews, and so we were going yeah. through one, one of the autograph areas. And there's Virgil just by himself. By himself. I mean, like at that point, the, pre- the whole area was pretty much empty because we had like press badges, so we got not there. even pretty much, dude. I swear to it was God, early. it was one table, and it was Virgil, and the space was huge. It was massive because they were. St- I think they were still setting up yeah. for people later in the day. So we go up to him and was like, "Hey." Could we do an interview? And he's like, nah, I don't want to do an interview. And then you got uh, two autographs from him. I was hoping that like maybe, hey, if I plunked down for some autographs, for some eight by tens, you know, and I and I had one of them autographed to Hilton, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I, gave, I ended up giving that to Hilton. Uh, and makes I, sense. <laughs> which makes sense. And I, I really should have kept it and just put it up here. Should have. 10 years, 13 years later. Uh, and, and I was hoping that that would, you know, they loosen him up a little bit for an interview. Nah, nah. No, Virgil did not. I didn't. I, I was thinking maybe he thought that we were going to mock him in some way, shape, or form. I'll be honest with you. I did not have any questions prepared whatsoever for him. I was just like, hey, it's Virgil. Nobody else is around here. Maybe he'll like some, you know, to, yeah. to, to get on camera. Yeah. But uh, but no. You know the 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 wrestling fans in us. You know, even though we're doing the machinima stuff at the time, we're like, why not? Yeah, I know. It's exactly. Virgil. It's Virgil. Yeah. So rest in peace, Virgil. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We talked about this. We talked about Tamatanga already. Uh, Shotgun Sean says, how hyped are you for Revolution? You know, I'll be honest with you. Usually when it comes to AEW pay-per-views, I'm like, ah, man, this is going to be long. The dread sets in. The dread sets in. I don't have any dread. You know, we got past, uh, Elimination Chamber two o'clock in the morning. I'm just interested in kicking back and watching some, it's a good card. It is a really good card. The question is, are we going to bother doing any of the kickoff show? And that's going to determine, I think. No, we don't do that anymore. All right. For the most part, our stamina going yeah. through the entirety four hour of the main card. So if we say no kickoff show, then it's yeah. five to nine. Yeah, it's, it's five, five to, to nine. Five to nine. Then hour recap. We're done by 1030. We're good to go. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Logan Taylor here says who would benefit most if the WB uh, got a women mid card title introduced a women's mid card title. Uh, I can think of a few names. Two names come to mind immediately. Three names come to mind immediately. Uh huh. And I'm going to power rank them. All right. Mm, Zoe Stark. Mm. Chelsea Green. Mm-hmm. Shayna Baszler. Those are good names. I'm going to also say, watch me, Liv Morgan. Oh, dude. I th- I, I'll be honest with you, man. I'll be honest. This is the, I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, Larson. Watch, Steve. In my estimation... There are already more well-established characters to fill the women's uh, the the top two title scenes and a one mid-card title scene before you even get to live. I don't disagree per se, but that that being said, she is really popular. People <laughs> really is, like she her. is. She is. When's Alexa Bliss coming back? I don't know. I don't I'll know. be having too much of a good time being a mom. Uh, let's see here. And that's not a slam dude, man. I had a great one. We got laid off. It was kind of like now knowing what happened. Like it was kind of a blessing in disguise. I spent so much time just being a happy dad. Yep. <laughs> it's yep. like, it's hard to take yourself away from that. Yep. Yep. Uh, time more here asks, what does Lexus King have to do for you to do a complete 180 on him? Oh, I'm pretty much there. I'm down with Lexus King, dude. I'm down with him. I think like, 
Oh, I'm gonna take a picture of that. I think like he's I don't even watch NXT and like that dude cracks me up every time I see him. And it might be in an ironic way. Like if the question is what would it take for you to get on board with him in a really earnest way? What would it take for you to buy a Lexus King t shirt? See again, I can love somebody. I think I have more ironic love t shirts than I do oh, regular fair ones. Fair enough. <sighs> Honestly, like at this point, it's if he kept the same sort of shitty character, but then put on fucking banger matches. Yeah, no, I'd probably be really, really into him. It need, yeah, he needs to put on the matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, lo I love, you know, characters who are like, I'm not entirely sure if the performer is self-aware. Yeah, those are those are kind of my favorites. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, David De La Cruz says, which promoter would you quantum leap into for the next three years? Triple H, Shawn Michaels or Tony Khan? And what would you do? Man, so you have an opportunity with Tony Khan to completely reinvent, like to completely mold AEW, take it from right now where, you know, it's not the hottest thing in the world and really try to prove that you know what you're talking about, yeah. that we know what we're doing. Yeah. You Plus, billionaire. I'll be honest with you, man. It'd probably be Tony Khan. Yeah. Because right now, HBK seems to know what he's doing with NXT, yeah. and I would have no idea where to start. I'd mess that up. I would have no idea where to start. I know I would not be able to swim with Triple H and the Sharks no. that he has to deal with. You'd have New Drew on TV, Chill Roman, Raw Gate Mutant would show up. He'd be We Book Raw. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. what it would be if, if, if we were in WB. That might not be terrible, to be honest. No, we'd, we'd enjoy it. Yeah. Tony Khan, like, everything, every criticism that we have of AEW, yeah. we could address. Yeah. Plus, billionaire. We'd probably find out just how hard it is. I would be like, God, you know what it would be? It'd be like, Man, I've got so much money. I can sit around and do absolutely nothing. Why do I even want to go to AEW right now? I know. I'd just start delegating a lot. <laughs> Which is probably what he should be doing. I know. I'd put myself on TV. That's what I would do. I'd be like, I'm a, I'm I'm gonna be on TV now, guys. Ooh. I'm gonna be authority figure. And people are like, who quantum leaps into Tony Khan's body? <laughs> I'd be like, okay, listen, guys, I got this great idea. Like, nine days. Nine days and I'll be on TV. Nine days. I got this great idea. Uh, it's an authority figure who's a bad guy. <laughs> oh, Steve Quantum leaves in the Tony Khan. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Justin Reed here says, is the Sean Spears return a perfect example of why leaks and spoilers from journalists have hurt the wrestling industry? I did see Russell votes, I think, yesterday before NXT allude to a return on NXT. Obviously, didn't name Sean Spears. Um, you know, you know, there's man. a way you to escape the leaks and spoilers if you can curate your social media to your satisfaction. Not to say you eliminate them entirely, but if you don't want to see stuff like that. If you all really care about leaks and returns and stuff like that, you can avoid leaks of returns. You can do that. Um, I don't know. It feels. It does feel like... Both companies seem to be able to keep secrets a little bit better. Well, then WB seemingly getting disinformation, misinformation out there to, to confuse people. I know, exactly. So, I don't know, man. I kind of feel like when they when they really want to keep a secret, they can keep a they secret. Keep a you secret. know, I feel like if Mercedes Monet has been signed to AEW for as long as she has been, like, they could have debuted her before that information was really widely available, I yeah. feel. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Dylan Sutter with Sean Spears coming back to NXT. I think a lot of people are excited about Sean Spears coming back to NXT. Do you see anyone from the old black and gold days making a return in addition to Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears? Who man. else? Oh, dude. You know, okay, you know what, man? I was really, and I hope wherever the dude is, I hope he's happy and he's of a good mindset because evidently that wasn't the case once he got called up. I really thought they had something good with Lars Sullivan. I know I felt bad for the guy because he had had like a certain past. Well, okay. He had shot himself in the foot with some of his like, you know, social media postings, message board postings or whatever. And then he had also done like some adult cinema. Um, and, you know, it's one thing to go out there and, 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 you know, I forget exactly what they were, but I know they were pretty messed up. It's one thing to have that out there when you're a younger man and it catches up with you. The adult cinema stuff, I felt bad because I feel like he was probably humiliated by that. And then once he got called up to main roster, 
um, he was going through like some anxiety issues and then that was it. I felt like from a character standpoint and from a presentation standpoint, I thought that dude had a lot to offer. I really do. Um, I don't think he's ever going to come back, but, uh, but yeah, I always kind of liked Lars Sullivan. I thought he was cool. Solomon Crow. <laughs> yeah. Let's see Sammy Callahan back in NXT. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. He always looks like he's like, he needs to breathe. Oh, that he, vest of his. it always looks like his shoulders are going to pop out of their socket when he does the thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> that time Sammy Zane debuted on main roster and he went like this. And his shoulder popped oh, out. Oh, that poor guy. I know. He's doing fine. Oh, he's doing great. Probably going to win that title. It's entirely possible. Mania. He's your next Intercontinental Champion. Uh, let's see here. Um, Andrew Connolly says, do you think the NXT should have their own money in the bank for the men and women and their own mini Royal rumble for the men and women as well? I, they you, have a money in the bank. They do. They have the breakout stars tournament. the contract. Yeah. The breakout stars. And rather than just, that's a good oh, example. I think of, kind of rather than just taking stipulations and gimmick matches they use in the main roster and kind of downsizing them for NXT. Come up with new ideas for NXT mm -hmm, that yeah. fill a similar purpose, like the breakout tournament. They don't do tournaments like that on the main roster. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, for something as as potentially valuable as a contract opportunity. Mm -hmm. Whenever you want it, usually if they have a number one contender tournament. So you get your title shot at pay per view or raw in three weeks or whatever. Yeah. And when those happen, it's few and far between. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rather than a Royal Rumble, they should do like a twelve competitor gauntlet. Yeah, you, you love those get, If matches. you get through that, then you get a shot at Ilya or something like that. Hey, next week, you're going to come over here and play that game, do some gauntlet matches? Yeah, let's do it. You can have 30 people and let's do a 30 person gauntlet match. Bro, we're going to be here all night. Are we going to sim it? We're going to play it. We're going to sim it and gamble. Sim <laughs> Real money. Bring some homies over and, uh, and do some gambling. <laughs> when I say homies, I just mean Elton. <laughs> we'll sim it. We'll make him guess ref the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 gonna be in a bad spot, man. If I'm betting against you, <laughs> no, we're simming it. We're not playing. Uh, oh, I know, but if he's guest reffing it, yeah. Um. Anyways, uh. Oh, here we go. We'll end on this one. This is a good one. Wrestling is real. Eighty-seven, ninety-one. What is your ultimate dream match that never happened in Dabba da -e? Wow. Mine is Eddie Guerrero versus Shawn Michaels. Yeah, that's pretty high. That's up there. that one. That's pretty high up there. Um, gosh, there's a lot. Like Punk and Stone Cold would be oh, yeah. high up there, probably. Um, I'm sure Punk would love to have himself and Bret Hart do a match. Yeah, that's probably his top dream match. Um, wow, there's a lot. Goldberg versus Big E. Yeah, Big E seemed to really want that. Match. Yeah, he did really want we'll that. Probably never see it. Anyways, that's going to do it for the show today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Over at Friendo Club Wrestling, we've got a new video over there. Until next time, we'll see you guys around. Goodbye.